community campus of sky route uh, uh, shift the balance between you know government led and uh, private led innovation because innovation is uh, taking place in the private sector as well uh, and uh, one can see that with, through all these startups no man that's a very interesting question that you asked me i think it's not uh, one against another it's a collaborative effort in fact uh, you probably are aware and uh, people may may not be knowing this but pawan and uh, nagabharat dhaka both have cut their teeth at isro both were at tiruvananthapuram at uh, vikram sarabhai space center this is where they cut their teeth and besides uh, the fact is that uh, their their mentors their advisors are primarily isro scientists who are isro scientists who are working with them mm. to to probably impart the experiences that they have had so that they can they do not repeat the mistakes and they do not you know reinvent the circle uh, the wheel as we say but uh, this is i think a collaborative effort in, in which probably isro is going to be working on heavier rockets uh, human rated rockets or maybe rockets which can take about 7000 kilograms and uh, this and, and the startup sector the private sector is now working at another segment of rockets so if you if you look at segments there are different segments and there are different segments requiring different capabilities capacities and capital investment we also know that pslv which is of the workhorse of uh, isro is going to be launched through a co consortium of uh, industry which is uh, primarily from the public and the private sector hl lnt godrej and so on so uh, i think right. this is a collaborative effort not a one against another effort in Indeed, different and, segments uh, true and uh, how does uh, you know vikram one uh, sort of uh, rejuvenate the ecosystem for indigenous r and d uh, whether it is propulsion materials uh, you know also uh, all the technology is involved with satellites so absolutely so uh, vikram one as you as as you have noted is a carbon composite vehicle and it is using cryogenic 3d technology so uh, the cutting edge technology which is available today and uh, the startups with their hunger for doing uh, you know i would say research work at the edge is something which is driving the innovation and the r&d and the r&d investment in the in the in the in the private sector is coming not only from i would say the industry but also it's very heartening to note that private equity players are also coming into the game and they are willing to invest uh, which actually is a long gestation game it's not something that probably you know you invest today and you get your results in three quarters you don't do that in rockets so if the if the private equity is also happy to invest and the industry is happy to invest this means there is some uh, i would say uh, future for indian industry and indian i would say uh, rockets or as well as satellites to perform as as a private sector uh, and in a very competitive manner with other countries as well so this is rocket science but you know how does uh, it uh, help in job creation investment flows uh, regional development uh, do you think this facility will act as a catalyst mark uh, this facility obviously is uh, is a turning point because uh, somebody has invested in uh, the the humongous amount of money to create uh, a center which is 200000 square feet uh, at the gmr aerospace city which is again uh, you know uh, where where a whole lot of development is taking place in the aviation and the aerospace ecosystem uh, space and aer aerospace especially cannot survive without a cluster of a cluster of what say um, uh, a cluster of companies or i would say the industrial cluster which will support them uh, to to build what they want to build for example in tiruvananthapuram we already have a cluster or a ecosystem which is supporting the r and d as well as rocket right. building uh, in tiruvananthapuram we need to create many more clusters a cluster in hyderabad or a bangalore it works very well because most of the rockets are going to be uh, you know launched from south but at the end of the day there is much more that can be done in the aerospace uh, and aviation ecosystem which probably do not require only just you know rocket launches r and d for example or satellite manufacturing can be up there in the north so we need to create a country wide sure. ecosystem for space industry in uh, going forward and finally how uh, how does one make this sustainable for the long term because what are the global trends for commercial space flight you know and how can we ensure that growth is taking place in collaboration with uh, let's say what's happening across the world uh, thank you so wonderful question because uh, as i said private equity or industry would not put its money where uh, where there's no roi coming in so the trend for example is not constellation and low earth orbits as you probably have seen what spacesx done and probably crowded up the entire i would say 
uh, low earth orbit. But at the same time, if we know, if if we if we move forward, we need to have cost effective low earth orbit satellites which can satisfy the requirements for communication. Uh, I would say surveillance for monitoring for earth observation as well as for uh, even even mundane things like crop monitoring or you know. Uh, marine systems and stuff like that. So we need uh, cost-effective low Earth orbit uh, uh, satellites, which can be which can be launched by again these smaller vehicles like Vikram One or the Agniwan, which is coming up, or the SSLV, which probably do not have a range for geostationary, but for low Earth orbits, they they right. really have a huge, huge, useful value. We leave it there. Thank you very much, Ratan Srivastava, space expert. Thank you.